Ciao, sono Anna e questo è My Italian Circle. What is the common thread that links Brighella, a character of the Italian Commedia dell'Arte, the French playwright Pierre Beaumarchais, and the great composers Paisiello, Rossini and Mozart, but Figaro, of course! <laughs> Il barbiere di Siviglia. I'm sure you all recognize this fast-paced, captivating aria from Il barbiere di Siviglia, one of the most performed operas of all times. It's the year 1816, and this opera by Gioacchino Rossini is received in Italy with unbounded success. This masterpiece has delighted opera lovers ever since, but, incredibly, the premiere in Rome took on the proportions of a fiasco. <laughs> to understand why, let's step back for a moment and focus on the events that led to the creation of this unique masterwork. In 1775, the original play Le Barbier de Seville premiered in Paris. It was a comedy, the first of the three so-called Figaro plays. The author was Pierre-Augustin Caron de Beaumarchais, a French inventor, playwright, musician, diplomat and spy, who is best known for his theatrical works, especially for the trilogy that revolves around the clever and enterprising character named Figaro, the Barber of Seville, the Marriage of Figaro and the Guilty Mother. The second play inspired Mozart's opera Le Nozze di Figaro. Beaumarchais' comedy is not without interest, but it's utterly predictable. The story of the thwarted love between Count Almaviva and Rosina, and the travesties devised by Figaro to trick the elderly tutor, do not introduce anything new. The work follows one of the classic plots taken from the Italian Commedia dell'Arte. The character of Figaro is actually based on the stock character of Brighella, one of the comic servants of the Commedia, a ruggish, quick-witted, opportunistic and even lustful figure. Brighella was a jack of all trades whose loyalty could be easily bought. Because of his almost sentimental view of love, though, young lovers could trust him. Giovanni Paisiello was one of the most successful and influential opera composers of his time, a real musical celebrity. His career took him to the most important European courts at the end of the 18th century, and in 1776 Paisiello was invited by the Russian Empress Catherine II to St. Petersburg. There, in 1782, he produced Il Barbiere di Siviglia, after Beaumarchais' comedy. It is considered by many his masterpiece, and it reigned supreme for three decades as one of Europe's most popular operas, before being overshadowed by Rossini's setting. Before we go on, let's listen to this charming aria, Saper bramate bella il mio nome, from Paisiello's Barbiere di Siviglia. In 1815, at the age of 23, Rossini is already Rossini, a composer of great genius, who already had two absolute masterpieces to his name, Tancredi and L'Italiana in Algeri. That year, Rossini signed a contract for the composition of a playful drama in two acts, called Alma Viva, or L'Inutile Precauzione. The original title was actually Il Barbiere di Siviglia, 
but it was changed in deference to Paisiello. The idea of a remake of the Barbiere di Siviglia while Paisiello was still alive was indeed a risk. The premiere was violently opposed by Paisiello supporters, who thought it was an insult towards the great master. The flap was soon wiped out by the unconditioned applause that was going to accompany this masterpiece ever since. Now, let's meet the main characters, understand the story, and above all, listen to the music. Figaro, Barbar and Factotum. Count Almaviva, a young nobleman. Rosina, a young lady and ward of Dr. Bartolo. Dr. Bartolo, Rosina's guardian. Count Almaviva, a Spanish nobleman, is in love with Rosina, the rich ward of Dr. Bartolo, an old physician who plans to marry her himself. Almaviva, disguised as a poor student called Lindoro, enlists the help of Figaro, a barber, who prides himself on his ability to manage the affairs of the city. Let's listen to his famous cavatina, where he boasts his qualities. Largo al factotum della città. Presto, a bottega, che l'alba è già. Ah, che bel vivere, che bel piacere, per un barbiere di qualità. Ah, bravo, Figaro, bravo, bravissimo, bravo. Fortunatissimo per verità, bravo, pronto a far tutto, la notte, il giorno, sempre d'intorno in giro sta. Miglior cuccagna per un barbiere, vita più nobile, no, non si dà. Rasori e pettini, lancette, forbici, al mio comando tutto qui sta. The language used here is almost identical to today's Italian, with just a few details to point out. Presto a bottega. Presto in bottega. Rasori. Rasoi. No, non si dà. No, non c'è. Figaro is a general factotum to the household. First, it suggests Count Almaviva to sing a sweet serenade presenting himself. Then manages to get Almaviva inside the house, dressed up as a drunken soldier, so he can talk to Rosina. Rosina, of course, knows that Lindoro, or the Count Almaviva, is in love with her. Io son Lindoro, che fido adoro, che sposa mi bravo, che amo me mi chiamo. Se il mio nome saper voi bramate, dal mio labbro il mio nome ascoltate. Io son Lindoro, che fido vadoro, che sposa vi bramo, che a nome vi chiamo, di voi sempre parlando così, dall'aurora al tramonto del dì. Labbro, labbra, dalla mia bocca. Fido, fedelmente. Bramo, desidero. Di, giorno. Here, Count Almaviva addresses Rosina using the traditional courtesy form, voi, you, plural. In today's Italian, the courtesy form is lei, she. Rosina is an independent woman who aims to get what she wants, in this case, the love of Lindoro. This aria reveals her nature. Io sono docile, sono rispettosa, sono obbediente, dolce, amorosa, mi lascio reggere, mi fo guidar, 
ma se mi toccano dov'è il mio debole, sarò una vipera, sarò, e cento trappole prima di cedere farò giocare. Reggere, portare, fo, faccio. Meanwhile, Bartolo is aware of Almaviva's interest in Rosina and tries to marry Rosina himself. He asks Don Basilio for help. The latter suggests to slander the Count to destroy his reputation, but Bartolo insists on drawing up the marriage contract. La carogna è un penticello Una orecca assai gentile La calunnia è un venticello, una orecca assai gentile che insensibile sottile leggermente dolcemente incomincia a sussurrar piano piano terra terra sottovoce sibilando va scorrendo va ronzando nell'orecchie della gente si introduce destramente e le teste di cervelli fa stordire e fa gonfiare destramente con abilità. Later on the same day, the Count arrives at the house, this time disguised as Don Alonso, a music master sent to substitute for Basilio, who is supposedly ill. Rosina recognizes Lindoro immediately. The couple sits at the harpsichord and exchanges promises of love. Figaro arrives to shave Bartolo, and with an excuse he steals the key of the balcony and hands it to Count Almaviva. He will meet Rosina at midnight. Bartolo figures out that Don Alonso is an impostor and decides to marry Rosina later that night. It's midnight, and Count Almaviva has climbed into Rosina's balcony. While the two lovers talk, Basilio enters with the notary, calling for Bartolo. Figaro boldly steps forward and tells the notary to perform the wedding ceremony for Count Almaviva and Figaro's niece. The lover signed the contract with Figaro and Basilio as witnesses. Their happiness is interrupted by the arrival of Bartolo with a police officer, but the Count once again avoids arrest by revealing his identity, this time to everyone. Bartolo at last bows to the inevitable as everyone celebrates the triumph of love. Guess how long it took Rossini to write this unprecedented opera? More or less 20 days. He was definitely under pressure. This accounts for the carefree insertion of some pages taken from pre existing works. Nonetheless, the result is a masterpiece that sweeps one away with its unstoppable sequence of genial ideas and solutions in a captivating, unforgettable crescendo. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and have a look at our website for plenty of free resources to help you learn Italian. Finally, have a look at our other videos about opera. Ciao!